Great. Uh, so, welcome uh, to presentation about uh, CFA, which means Config Files API. It's uh, API that uh, mainly used for some uh, editing of uh, configuration file. Uh, by editing, I mean uh, fine uh, small changes in this uh, file that do not uh, break existing stuff. So it's not something like uh, salt or CF engine or, or such stuff that owns whole file and modifies just deploy a new version. It's API for do small changes like you expect, for example, from Yast, that it doesn't break your existing stuff, doesn't break your own comments and such stuff. So, uh, what's the content? Uh, I will explain why we create a new API, why uh, old one doesn't is not enough. Uh, then I explain uh, design of this API, how it works together, and then I of course show some real time or uh, real life examples of usage, because on Tumbleweed it's already used. So I will show, show some code that's, that you use in Tumbleweed. So why? The, it's obvious reason, too, too many face palms when you use or see old code. That's, that's usually the biggest motivation. If the old code works somehow and is you, you can somehow use it, then you do it. But if it starts to be very annoying, then you have motivation to uh, do it better. So uh, currently I will mostly talk about Yast, uh, because Yast, uh, even now, still use some, some old API for these uh, changes. It's called SCR. Uh, I even don't know what it actually means. It's a very old acronym. And uh, what's uh, currently problem? It's not much reusable. It's, it can be used only in EAST, and even if some projects uh, uh, have some motivation to, to uh, reuse it, uh, in the end they uh, just give up because it's too tied with the rest of uh, EAST. It requires a lot of libraries from EAST. Also, the last point is the reason that it used for communication uh, YCP, which is now a uh, very legacy and almost dead language. It's also monolithic, so if you want to use just a part of it, like uh, its uh, ability for parsing files, and uh, actually don't want to read it or write it from current system, then you have a problem. Uh, also, uh, it's completely written uh, by Yast team and maintained by them, so every piece is uh, done in-house, which is always not so good. We, we would like to share our workflow and also share maintenance of, of some parts with other interest, interested teams. Yeah, its API is very strange, uh, and it's... Uh, related that it, uh, its API is confusing. Uh, and we see it again uh, and again in EAST when someone new comes to the team. The SCR is the most scary part of EAST. It's hard to explain it for newcomers, it's hard to use it for them, a, and it's quite hard to also explain how it works because it has a lot of abstractions that are not needed, that makes sense 15 years ago when, when it started this project, but now no longer made much sense. And it's hard to explain something that doesn't make sense to anyone. So, uh, what's a requirement for a new API that we hope will be uh, replace a CR and will be easier to use? So, of course, the first stuff is uh, easy to use. If you have something that's hard to use, no one will use it or try to find some shortcuts how to avoid uh, complex stuff. It has to be also modular. That if uh, in future something useful appear in open source community, we would like to replace, for example, some stuff that doesn't work well with something that's uh, 
already existing or will exist in future and works better. So we, have, uh, we would like to have uh, replaceable parts. And also we would like to have our own parts that can be used at other places. So some modules written for uh, CFA, we would like to reuse elsewhere also. Yeah, of course, uh, requirements now uh, is easy to test because what's not tested is usually broken. And of course, it doesn't mean that if you have 100% test coverage that it's not broken, but there's a very uh, smaller chance it really decreases the, the number of bugs. Of course, it should be object oriented because SCR is uh, from YCP times, so it's uh, functional based. But we would like to use object because currently as it's in Ruby, so we would like object API. And of course, the most important part is friendly to newcomers. So if someone would like to start with Yast or uh, would like to contribute to Yast, then don't have a strange part in its code, which is hard to understand. So now let's look uh, on design of CFA. It basically has three components. Uh, the basic one is reader writer. It has a single responsibility. Uh, translate string to uh, some uh, target uh, storage or uh, string or w whatever it is, just uh, write string or read that string from target. Then you have parser serializer, so you can, this string is then uh, somehow interpret to some, uh, some tree or vice versa, you, you have a modified tree and want to translate it back to string that can be read or write. And then there is a model, which is uh, something like high-level API for given uh, configuration file. Usually model have some actions for it, uh, some uh, operations, and that operations work on a past tree. And that uh, small line between a reader and model is a dependency injection. So what basically user use is they have model and then can uh, pass different reader and writer. So if you have, uh, for example, a file that's uh, not on your system, but somewhere over network, you can write your own uh, reader writer for that network file and pass it to model. So in the end, uh, the stuff was read and uh, write from this reader. So now let me look uh, closer to this. As I said, reader writer is very simple uh, interface. It allows read and write, just two methods. Uh, both methods get a path as its argument. Uh, the path is relative to root, so if you have uh, uh, if you want to read your, uh, for example, grab to default file, uh, you just pass, I want read file, that that's, uh, path is uh, uh, etc default grab. Uh, it works only with plain strings, so no formatting, no, <coughs> no stripping of, of this string or any other operation. It's really just get me string. And examples we uh, already have is a common file in Ruby, which means uh, read from this path, write to this path. Then we have memory file, which is very useful for testing. That string is held only in memory, and you construct it in code, how a file should look like, and then work on it, and then compare if, if memory looks after some modification as it should look like. And then in Yast, we create our, also our own specific, that's not part of CFA, uh, target file that's used during installation that they recognize if, if you uh, need to write to target system. That's, that's uh, where, where we install stuff. Of course, uh, and if someone else needs uh, his own writer, for example, 
uh, reading, writing over SSH, then just create your own class that implements these two methods, and it's enough. Uh, the second part is, is parcel. So it, uh, the, it translates between string and parse tree. Uh, each tree is uh, parcel specific. Uh, I'm also considering uh, create some uh, generic parse tree, but in the end I found it's uh, too much abstraction and it can uh, lose some uh, features of a given parser. So currently it's a specific parser tree. It's quite low level tree. Uh, for example, in Augas, it holds all commands. It doesn't know any relations. It just is positions and can recognize some, some basic syntax. And as I said, examples is Augas, which we use mainly for uh, that parsing and uh, serialization. And another possible one is uh, line parser that uh, is for uh, simple config files that have uh, each line one, uh, one option. So it's very, very simple parser. And of course, you can use much more. It's just uh, currently used ones. And as you can see, the, the, uh, the hardest part, which is parsing, we currently delegate to Augeas that already have its own lenses that uh, specify the syntax of trees, and there's uh, many available lenses, so we don't spend time writing open parser for new files. Yeah, and model is high-level API. It allows uh, higher uh, operations, like uh, enable something, some op operation, or remove something. Uh, it, uh, it's uh, coupled with parser, so it knows it's parser and it's usually uh, depend on it. So there is no option to switch to different parser for a given model, but you can pass your own reader, as I mentioned before. Also, uh, models currently allows to switch uh, globally, globally reader, so if you have mo more models, you can in one place switch that all models use different uh, reader like a network one or installation one. Uh, also models ensure for consistency, so if there is a config file that uh, have, for, for example, two, two colliding options, then the model en should ensure that it's not, it's properly used. Uh, the model is something for target user, so it should, as I mentioned, it should be very high level and easy to use for them. And examples are some grab models, which I'll sh uh, show uh, in a few minutes. So now, uh, interest, more interesting part is uh, examples. So, let me show. Open it. Okay, so uh, currently this is a plugin for uh, CFA for Grab2. So the idea is that each uh, software have its own plugin that handles all its files. Currently for Grab2 we have uh, four configuration files that we use. And uh, for example, the, the easy one is uh, the device map, which is some uh, it's a mapping between uh, kernel devices and Grab2 devices. And how it looks like, it's a model, it's, uh, it has its own parser, and it uses Augas, so you just write, I want Augas, and use this specific lens for it. It has its own path, so it's also constant where th this file lives. And as you can see, for example, we ensure a consistency. Grab to, uh, or basically, uh, yeah, font. Okay. So let me enlarge the font. Okay. I hope we can. Oh, you. 
like this one. Ah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so as you can see in, in uh, SAFE, we ensure that we use uh, at the maximum eight uh, devices because it's some limitation of uh, grab that it doesn't allow more. It's uh, caused by some hardware limitations. So there is some consistency check. Uh, there is some helpers like get me grab device for a given kernel device, get me system device for a given uh, grab device. So it's really quite high level API that hides some internal details like some ordering and such stuff. It allows adding, removing, and also uh, allows you to give some grab devices, which as you can see, uh, filter out comments. So you just, just get the, the real stuff. And this is a simple model. For a more complex one, it's even more significant how it can uh, make uh, work easier, which is a default one. It's usually the, the, the most interesting config file for Grab2. So uh, there is a set of simple attributes, which basically mean that it creates a Ruby assessor called default for a key grab default. And that's a common string once, so it's just defined. There is such options, and you can read it, you can write it. And then comes a more tricky ones like uh, kernel parameters. And kernel parameters have some data, but it looks like string, kernel parameters, but in fact, it's more complex because it's a command line stuff, which have its own internal logic. And for example, you are interested if your uh, default kernel get given parameter. So the model, define its own parameters and then you can quote like it's in documentation if there is parameter quiet and you, if you get through it means there is such parameter if you get false it means there is no such parameter if you get string it means there is a single instance of this parameter with given value and to be even more interesting Karen allows uh, more uh, uh, specify a parameter multiple time. So if there is, for example, if you use uh, seri two serial consoles, then you can ask for it and you will get it. So this really makes uh, working with the configuration file much, much easier for target user because you have some helpers that ensure everything is uh, properly quoted, properly read it, placed properly. Also, another example is if you have configuration option that have just few possible values. Of course, you can let user to add anything they want, but there is a risk that uh, it, the, the grab two doesn't recognize such option. So, good model should mention what's possible, what's possible values, and then you can, if you set it, then again validate that it used the, the proper one. Okay, and now let's check how it actually works. So now I show you a YAST code that used this device map. And also shows that there is, of course, a much more logic above CFA. Because, for example, in EAST, uh, the idea is that we use UDIF devices and we want to use it in device map. But uh, CFA itself doesn't know anything about UDIF. So it's again layer above CFA. So if you want to check if a device map contains given this, you need to check that it uh, contain given this translate it to UDEV device. But if you do some, some proposing, you just do some filling, ordering, you can just ask, give me all this with uh, HD prefix, sort it by uh, BIOS order, and such stuff. And now let me show a bit about CFA itself. 
base model have uh, one interesting feature I would like to show you is uh, how it set value, which is sorry. Yeah. So how it set value is that basically it tries to modify if value already exists and uh, if uh, in configuration file this value is not yet defined then it try to uncomment it because usually what, what happens in default configuration files it that, that you have some uh, comments and below is uh, if you uncomment this line it happened this so we basically replace this uh, commented out option and use it and only as a last option is that we add this new line to the to the end of a file. So it tried to behave quite smartly when it tried to modify something. Yeah. And here is a example implementation of a memory file. As you see, it's very simple, simple stuff. It just read write and hold it into internal memory as content. Okay, so this is example how it looks like. And do you have any questions regarding this API or its possible usage? Okay, it looks like not. So thanks for your attention and enjoy this, this evening. <laughs>